And the first place goes to Sophie Horner from DuPont Manual High School. And the first place is Kate Adams from DuPont Manual. Second place, Alan Jiang from DuPont. First place, Sarah Schwartz from DuPont Manual. Richard Gonesina from DuPont Manual. Matthew Raj and Madden Sapivswar. First place, Sanjana Rain from DuPont. Brandon Young from DuPont. The high school, Sedlar Malaclobology. Second place goes to Caleb Bridgewater from DuPont Manual. Sarah Dugan from DuPont. The next member of the team is Dia Mathur, also from Dunbar. For high school be behavioral science, uh, in third place, from Manual, which is awesome, uh, Dia and Sophia. In second place, uh, from Manual, Monica McGrath. In first place, from Manual, Ben Green. In second place, from Manual again, is, I should just stop saying this school. Third place, from DuPont Manual, Poonam. In second place, from DuPont Manual, Rashmi. And then first place, from DuPont, Alan Jane. In uh, second place is Henry Owen from, or, oh, 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 yeah, from DuPont Manual. My name is Shreya Barde and I'm a senior. My name is Nevada Takunker and I'm a senior. My name is Richard Gunasena and I'm in 11th grade. Sophia Corner, I'm in 10th grade. I'm Tess Fastine, I'm a senior. Rishi Janala, I'm in 12th grade. I'm Roshan Duganini and I'm in the 11th grade. Alan Jang. Kid Adams. Siam Shah and I'm in 11th grade. This is Song Fishnu Butler and I am in 11th grade. I was born in Louisville, Kentucky. I was born in Israel. Durham, North Carolina. Kirpur, Pakistan. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I was born here in Louisville. Clarksville, Indiana. I'm originally from Sri Lanka. Sanjin, China. Tiruvannandapuram, India. Wichita, Kansas. Boston, Massachusetts. I was born in Bombay, India. My science fair had to do with an environmental pollutant called acrolein and its effects on um, liver toxicity that's caused by HIV medicine. Two years ago, I did a, um, I created a medicine tracking system. I designed, developed, and built a working prototype of a system to track and control access to medication. I focused on trying to create a treatment for metastatic melanoma, and I wanted to create a cheap, effective treatment that was targeted just for the cancer cells. This upcoming year, I'm focusing on hybrid capacitors. So using my knowledge in the previous years to increase energy capacity, I'm going to create a device that has a high amount of energy output for an extended period of time. My project was the effect of HIF targeting oligonucleotides on breast cancer. The effect of grip diameter on weight perception. Equal access to health care for patients with mobility disabilities. So my grandparents had been staying with us for a little while then and I noticed how many different pills they had to take at different times. It seemed very complicated and challenging and I wanted to figure out a way to make that easier. I was getting my wisdom teeth taken out and they pulled out one of my nerves and I don't have feeling in the side of my cheek anymore, which got me interested in nerves and the regeneration of nerves. Then I went and looked for a mentor in uh, neurology. He suggested that I work with genes. Even if you look at laptop batteries, you have to charge them every single day. And this is very problematic because if you look at soldiers, when they go on 72 hour missions, they have to carry many batteries because each battery has a very low battery life. And this leads to scoliosis and very negative health problems. My whole family's from India. Power is really scarce there. So and it's really expensive there as well. So what you really want is to have a really cheap source. Most batteries use lithium ion batteries. And with the new technology CFX, it's becoming about $5 a piece for these small coin cell batteries. However, what I'm trying to do is actually use sodium metal because sodium is 10 times cheaper. To win the science fair, it's all about you know, showing your passion about the question you're asking. The science fair is really about practicing the scientific method, which involves a lot of critical thinking. You have to have an interest, a genuine interest, in whatever you're studying because otherwise you might not give it your full effort and you might not take every path that's available to you. Perseverance, uh, a good attitude. A ton of hard work. Good scientific habits. Passion for what you're doing. Being able to talk to them as a human, not as a robot that knows all the science stuff. No one's going to be interested if you don't like really show that like this is important and here's why. You should believe that your project means something, your project has value, your project has promise, and your project can actually change the world. Well, failing to prove your hypothesis isn't really a failure. It kind of sets the guidelines for future studies. But 
that can lead you to go to a different path and prove a different hypothesis, right? Failing to prove your hypothesis just means that you've found another way that doesn't work. You're closer to the goal. You've, you've crossed out one of the possibilities. My peers have done a lot of really cool projects. Some of the uh, computer science projects, I know uh, last year my friend did something on uh, spectral microscopy and solving uh, a problem that can help people in Africa. How air pollution works with your lungs and how it can affect you as well and cause diseases. And it was so intricate. I think there are some like battery projects that have immediate impact like uh, Roshans or Rishis. Well something that uh, my friend Alan did that won a couple awards at the International uh, Intel ISEF in Los Angeles last year was he built a portable photospectrometer that you can use from your cell phone. So a photospectrometer basically beams light through liquid and uh, tests the absorbance of the light. But he made one really cheaply and you just, you attach it to your smartphone and then you use your smartphone to run this photospectrometer, which is really neat because normally they cost thousands of dollars. And it was all his own like innovation, which I think, you know, he saw the need and then went out and created a product that is completely useful and something that I know people now are trying to buy from him. Um, I think I'd be most likely to get funded probably somewhere out in California or in the Northeast, like around Boston or Washington. Probably uh, Boston. Probably California. Um, I would probably go to Geneva. Maybe in the Silicon Valley in California. Um, the chances of my research getting funded in Kentucky are moderate uh, because the subject is important, but the problem is the department does not have enough money. Maybe, but I'm not sure. U of L and, and University of Kentucky are the two main research centers, and that's kind of all the state of Kentucky has, as a whole has.